Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and Steve Donahue and I are reading Kingdom Come uh, for the month of September. We're reading part one of a four-part series, and uh, it's a graphic novel written by Mark Wade and illustrated or painted by the incredible Alex Ross. This is an Alex Ross cover, which is just magnificent. And after reading part one, I now know a few more who these people are. I, I, I thought that that might be Hawkman. Hawkman, it turns out that it is. This is the Green Lantern in some sort of armor that I'm not familiar with. And then this guy is the Flash. It, total, a total redesign from anything that I'm familiar with. This is a maybe a better close-up look. And he has this helmet, I believe. Um, it's like the imagery from, um, I think it's Hermes, the uh, Greek mythological god. He has this um, kind of Greek helmet on. And I think that the design choice is fabulous. And I didn't know what I was going to be getting into in this story. I thought maybe it's a Superman story. Uh, or at least, of course, Superman's going to play um, center stage of maybe a much larger story. And so it turns out that um, this book begins, the story begins in the distant or not so distant future where the superheroes that... Um, everyone might associate with the DC universe have either gone away or gone into hiding or limited themselves uh, in some capacity. And the world is now overrun with these super-powered beings. Uh, very much get the sense that they are not superheroes. The, um, the difference between a superhero or supervillain has been completely blurred. Um, th th these are um, fantastically powered um, men or women or creatures that don't seem to have any responsibility towards mankind. They're either um, being irresponsible in, in these huge blowout fights that they'll have in, in, in the middle of cities, or just be uh, inconsiderate or dismissive to mankind. Um, and it creates this sense of havoc in the daily lives everyone around these overpowered beings that they can't do. Um, there's no one powerful enough or strong enough, or there's no military force um, or police force that can put any sort of a, a, a offensive or uh, create a truce or settle some sort of um, any way of settling or reconciling what they're doing to their lives. They, they, they are just overpowered beings. Um, very close to the, the gods that you would see in the Iliad, where they, they could just trample over um, any mere mortal that they come across. And it begins with it's, it reminds me of a Christmas carol. The, the, the plot structure is like a Christmas carol. We have a, a dying man speaking to his pastor, and uh, the dying man is talking about these visions that he's having. The pastor is trying to calm him down, uh, settle his nerves, um, giving him some sort of consolation. That you're not really having visions, you're just very sick. The man, man dies, you find out that this pastor has um, 
taken on some of the abilities that this dying man had. We're told that the, the dying man once used to be uh, the sand man, which I'm, I, I'm assuming has no connection with um, the, the sand man by Neil Gaiman. Uh, I, I guess they're totally different um, characters. I don't think the sand man was a superhero. And um, we see the world this is such a great cover, or a great big spread. Fan fantastic, like every page is just overwhelm overwhelming with, it's overwhelming. Uh, there, there's so much visual input and motion and action and beautiful design. The composition of this, it, it, it looks like mayhem. It looks like um, just com complete havoc all this stuff happening and then here's one of these super powered beings uh, just kind of cradled there laughing not a care in the world um, at the beginning of this we get this big like gallery set of ho wholly new characters to me i i don't recognize any of these people and None of them look like heroes. They don't necessarily look like villains either. It's a blur of what they're doing. What kind of goal that they have other than just fighting relentlessly. And just, it's like a war zone. The, the, these super beings are unbothered by all this. We have the pastor in his church giving a sermon. And then just, it's ethereal that the, the, the glowing light, we have this um, uh, otherworldly being coming straight through the stained glass <laughs> and a lot of this is uh, setting aside disbelief and going along with the fun of the story and all that but this pastor who is not only living in a world full of superpowered beings and godlike men just a whole world of that, but also remembers the su superheroes of the past, uh, Superman and Wonder Woman and um, uh, the Green Lantern, the Flash, and all, all those larger-than-life characters. And he comes by this guy, he comes into the church, and it seems like he forgets, uh, all, all, forgets about the world that he lives in. This should be an everyday... Uh, encounter for him and instead he asks are you an angel which might make sense in the real world because you don't have giant floating men uh, passing through stained glass windows and talking to you while they're glowing but that's a world that this person lives in and this glowing person this cloaked figure uh, needs the help of the pastor um, because he has these visions that were passed on to him from uh, that dying man. And like a Christmas story, he goes like, well, I'm going to go and take you around and show you what the present is like, what's, what's going on in the world today. And so <laughs> here they are. Great image. He says, they've just sort of like been zipped somewhere else. He goes, where are we? What do you see? I see a Midwestern farmland, but that's not possible. And so we see that Superman, Clark Kent, Kal-El, has turned his back on humanity. So there's all of these terrible things happening, all these new super-powered uh, beings, and 
instead he's uh, rebuilding the rafter of the barn and I don't know why Superman would be doing this, why he would be picking it up to move it in, even if you're super strong. Like, is, is that how you think cars are supposed to be moved around? He could drive it. He's not running in there. It would take just as much time to, to start the tractor and move it. <laughs> um, and we've seen encounter Wonder Woman comes and visits uh, Super, Superman, who's a much older, you can see he's gray, he's got a beard and gray hair, that white beard and the, there's white streaks on the side of his uh, temples. Um, and Wonder Woman is pleading with him, saying, the whole world's upside down, the world's a mess, um, and we get uh, hints that there's one person in particular who is um, uh, truly dangerous. We learn his name is like Magog or something. What was his name? Yeah, Magog. And a lot of really strange things happening. A lot of really strange things start to happen. We're um, like, it seems like we're in Smallville, the Midwestern plain with the wheat fields. Um, and I, I, I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, he just says, I'm going to stay here. There's things that are uh, growing and need tending to. And Wonder Woman says, well, are you sure about that? And then she taps on this um, like holographic wall. And it turns out that the whole Midwestern scene is like an illusion. So, Superman is actually on like a holodeck or something, and they walk in, somehow, we don't really see where this structure is, but they walk into, I'm guessing is like the Fortress of Solitude, and then this door appears, and Superman walks into like a void and we learn that there's this Magog character and we get uh, there he is and so and look at Superman there <clears throat> and Magog is just uh, creating uh, all sorts of havoc and <clears throat> there was um, just a, a devastating event one of these fights, sometimes uh, these super beings will knock buildings over or um, a whole uh, city block will get leveled. Um, t terrible, terrible things. Um, makes you feel like you're just surrounded by terrorists um, more than anyone that's trying to keep you safe. But during one of these fights, Adam Man gets ripped in half, and there's a, like a nuclear explosion that, does it say, it was, like wipes out, uh, yeah, wipes out the entire state of Kansas, as well as parts of Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri, an irradiated wasteland. And so, you start getting a sense of like how incredibly dangerous of a few of these super beings can be uh, the the like the bread basket of um, North America which was which is this um, uh, agricultural um, uh, agricultural um, like boiling pot uh, for the entire world it, it's just a giant food source uh, for, the, for the amount of uh, wheat, soy, and all, all the vegetation that the whole world relies on, either directly from ha having the, the, those food sources or just economically in trade, or something like that. Um, and Superman sees this, uh, Wonder Woman's explaining it, 
we have that cloaked glowing person and then the pastor who's been uh, been taken along we're kind of seeing levels of all of these um, each person witnessing other events and Wonder Woman can't seemingly can't um, convince Superman and then the the cloaked person uh, explains that some of these uh, some of these superheroes of days gone by are still operating in a limited capacity and so we're going to see uh, examples of uh, the Flash and the Green Lantern and Hawkman, and it does not seem to be any better of a situation. It's still real, just still nightmarish, and I don't know if that's because they've retreated in some way and they're now um, acting differently than what they had used to, but. We have the Flash, and where is he? What's the name of his city? Keystone City. And in Keystone City, the Flash is just running himself silly. He decides, I suppose, uh, that he's just going to start running and never stop. And he's going to become this ever-present blur through the streets of this city. And there's going to be... Uh, no crime. That you can't do anything bad because the Flash, who moves at lightning speed, is everywhere all the time. And not only does that sound like the Flash is stuck in one of the circles of Dante's hell uh, to just be almost like running in place indefinitely within a very specific parameter, it also seems like like a dystopian nightmare for the inhabitants of that city. It's like um, that like Orwellian um, authoritarian uh, dictatorship where there's just someone always watching you and any anything that you might do, which the Flash disagrees with, he's right there to uh, confront you or do something about it. Uh, even still, the Flash looks amazing. I just don't know what he's doing running in circles like that. And Hawkman. Th th this one is even more horrifying. Like, so wh where is he? You see it. Giant Hawk. Half hawk, half man, uh, flying around. I don't know why anyone wants him up there. Uh, that, that seems like a bad thing. I've never read Hawkman stories, but uh, I wouldn't be happy about that. And then the Green Lantern, which I thought the Green Lantern was like uh, like a regular person on Earth, uh, just like a regular human being that somehow gets like an alien ring and then gets superpowers. And now there's uh, Emerald City floating um, in Earth's orbit. And we learn the Green Lantern is just waiting around for aliens. So that thing is flying in the sky and then he's just sitting there. And so is the Green Lantern not a person anymore? Like, is he just... Is he just sitting there? Is he doing other things? That armor does not look comfortable. This whole series, like, kind of showing the Flash and the Haw Hawkman and Green Lantern, at, at least for the first section, doesn't really make sense to me. I don't, I don't know... Green Lantern just sitting there does not make any sense to me at all. And then we get ba Batman's... G Gotham City at this point in this story look 
So is this Batman? That does not look like a pleasant place to live. Just these like, you know, inventions of Batman, these like giant mechanical, um, giant me mechanical like military equipment surrounding really like, yeah, they look like teenage boys, like these children being terrorized by that thing. Um, and so this cloaked figure shows the pastor, uh, what Superman's up to. Wonder Woman seems like, um, more of an operative of hope, at, at least the way that she was interacting with Superman. Um, all the rest of them, I don't know, I don't understand what they're doing. Um, the pastor gets all upset and goes like, well, everything you just showed me is like, horrible. Like, wh why are you showing me this? And we don't really get an answer. He's just like, um, well, I, I wasn't showing this to you just to bring you hope. There's a, another reason. And then we get um, what seems like another like senseless um, blowout fight scene just in the middle in the middle of a city. We have all these characters. So that one was in that front gallery. All this stuff's going on. Things are blowing up. People are in danger. Um, and then there's a whoosh of wind. And it's a fantastic panel. Look! Up in the sky! It could only mean one thing. And look at this. Who's back? He shaved his beard, combed his hair, put his Superman clothes back on. And just in one swoop, what we're told, what we're shown, is that there's all of these characters flying around, super powered, all these things. And in one swoop, uh, Superman practically holding them like little babies by their diapers. Flying there, looking majestic, a beacon of hope. Everybody's happy. And then we have this panel. So he's he's back. He's finally back out in the open. He kind of quickly um, made short work of some maybe these low-level super-powered beings. And then he gets blasted with this like red. And this red is throughout story we see at the very beginning we see this just like very American it's like the, the bald eagle with the stars and stripes and there's a bat there the, the eagles holding that spear it's like hellscape all that red there early on in the book and then at the very end it looks like Superman's been caught in a trap. Um, people go, Dear God, the threat of Armageddon hasn't ended. It's just begun. And then that's the last... Yeah, and it's, again, we're, we're following this guy, this pastor, who's um, like our witness... Of, of all of these things that are happening. So we're in a, a, a future world overrun by um, indifferent superpowered beings that um, don't take into consideration um, the safety of the people they don't take it into consideration that maybe they're protecting anybody. They're just on another plane. Um, and we're going to have, I think, the heroes of old uh, come back and reset um, what it means to be a superhero. Um, 
good over evil, right over wrong. Um, chapter two is truth and justice. And now we see, we'll look at this next week, but, um, Green Lantern, and his armor, Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, here's the Flash, there's Hawk Man. I don't know any of these people in the background. Uh, no, I don't know any of them. And Batman has still been um, kind of distinctly missing. Uh, even in Gotham, we just see these mechanical uh, creations of Batman. But he's on the back cover looking like Michael Keaton. So I think Batman's going to play a role some of this. Uh, just a wonderful, um, visually pleasing reading experience. Um, I'm not so sure how much of the story makes sense, uh, wh why uh, we had to have the floating cloaked figure go to the pastor and show him um, Superman and Wonder Woman and Kind of go through the introductions of all these uh, superheroes. Uh, so far, it had no effect on Superman coming back. That was Wonder Woman showing him, showing uh, Clark Kent what the, what has happened to the world. Um, but m maybe he'll have some involvement. Um, m maybe he's that Virgil type guide for us to go through this story. I'm not sure. Um, so some things don't really make sense. We're only on part one, so um, I'm definitely intrigued what, what irradiated um, Superman and that red glow on his uh, uh, very first reappearance. But uh, some of my thoughts re uh, very much run through play by play of exactly what the story was, but uh, those are my thoughts. I can't wait to hear Steve talk about it. Uh, let me know if you're reading along or if you've already um, read it, any of your thoughts, any of your thoughts on what I had to say, anything like that. So thank you for watching. This is uh, part one of Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. And thank you for watching. Leave a comment if you would like, and take care.